First, it's our job to present to you our findings on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. Excuse me? There is no creature? Oh, sorry about that. Here, please take a look. A really good look. See? A little squiddy. But this is no ordinary squiddy. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. Eureka, indeed! In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover their turf with it. Trust me, I'm geeking out too. I'm a scientist. That's all I can do. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squid. Unsurprisingly, they each have a gender. There are inkling boys and inkling girls. And like more common squid, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Another curiosity. These squid apparently gain the ability to transform into humanoid form at the age of 14. In this bipedal form, their stubby legs move relatively slowly. But as a squid, they can swim through ink at high speeds. It's hardly worth comparing. They swim at nearly twice their running speed. This affects jumping too. The height they jump is equal in both forms. However, if they build momentum before jumping, their distance will significantly increase. Despite everything I know of gravity, matter, and science in general, they can also swim up walls when submerged in ink. However, they strangely cannot seem to cross this little barrier. Must be a mental thing, I'm assuming. Continuing this trend of odd behavior, it seems inklings only shoot ink in humanoid form. Using the Wii U GamePad controller's gyro sensor, one can alter which way they're aiming and make adjustments as they ink. Ah, ink flowing like a torrential waterfall. Science is beautiful. Plop some ink, hop in the ink, swim in the ink. This is the basic movement pattern of the inkling. We barely dipped into this creature's odd behavior patterns. Let's dive a little deeper into this titillating batch of scientific goodness. One unique inkling habit is to protect its habitat. Oh, the humanity, or the squididity. Inklings refer to this goopy, garish scene as a turf war. They split up into two teams of four inklings each. Then they fight. Why? To claim their turf or at least to cover more of it than the other team in three minutes time. Their weapons of choice? Anything that dishes out massive inkage. When their three minutes are up, the victor is determined by a mysterious cat beast named Judd. A cat named Judd who judges turf wars. Oh, science, how you amuse me. As does this curious limitation. Inklings can only swim freely in their own team's ink, even in squid form. Once they've stepped foot in enemy territory, they'll get stuck in their ink like a bear in a honey bath, except it's far less pleasant. In fact, inklings are so susceptible to foreign ink, getting hit by enough of it will cause them to spontaneously burst. It won't earn them any bonus points, but popping enemies will extend their turf. Luckily, once they pop, they don't stop. Instead, they'll respawn, allowing them to super jump. Tap on a teammate's icon on the Wii U gamepad map and an inkling will super jump to that location. This allows them to quickly get back into the action, right to the front lines of battle, or to support an ally deep in enemy territory. However, I've also heard that less aggressive squid may prefer hiding from others and focusing on covering territory to increase their turf. Hide and go ink, it's a sound strategy. Points are awarded for performance in a match. And points are currency for use in game. That's not all, pupils. Your points also determine how fast you level up. Fascinating. Squid are all about happening events, especially turf wars. And here are a few spots you'll find them. 
This strange location is called Urchin Underpass. Here, several areas are divided by concrete walls, so the clever inkling will memorize the shape of the path between these areas. Squid should especially watch out for the path connected to the center plaza. It gets messy there. Next, we'll examine Salt Spray Rig. This danger zone is known for the large chasm between its high and low areas. Both teams will surely attempt to claim the large area on top to earn a victory from above. That said, if they're not paying attention to the lower area, the opposing team may turn the tides of battle covertly. Black Belly Skate Park contains many wide open areas, so the battle takes place all over the map. It's a race for ownership of the center platform. If a team can manage that, they should be able to manage a win by controlling the higher ground. Walleye Warehouse is a close quarters map. Teams are locked in a tug of war on two sides of a series of obstacles. Arowana Mall jams both teams into a narrow area for intense matches. Looks like Turf Wars can break out just about anywhere. Like my chronic rash. Oh, uh, yeah, right there. Uh, moving along. Although Inklings are mere squid, I must say, they are extremely fashionable. They'll wear hats, glasses, outfits, and shoes, collectively known as gear. Now, I'm no fashion expert, but as a scientist, I'm utterly enamored by squid culture. My theory, these fashionable squid trends must stem from an urban habitat. Let's take a look. Here it is, Inkopolis. Fashion Central for a Young Squid Kid. Inkopolis is home to various shops, like a weapon shop and a clothing shop, each one owned and operated by a charismatic shopkeeper. Now, take a look at that tower in the middle. The shopping area next to it is called Booyah Base. Here, each shopkeeper represents a different section of marine life. This one is the clothing store, Jelly Fresh. It's a specialty shop for tops. The store clerk, Jalonzo, has a unique speech pattern. But he's popular with the squid kids, so I guess that makes him hip. Maybe that's why he wears a different t-shirt every day. He's got a rep to protect. Next up, the shoe shop, Shrimp Kicks. This store is devoted to the fashion of footgear. The store is owned by Krusty Sean, the tiger prawn. He loves shoes so much, he wears a different shoe on each of his eight feet. Here's the headgear shop, Cooler Heads. In addition to caps and hats, it offers glasses and other accessories too. Annie is the poster girl for this shop. She's a bit timid, but she has a huge following. A bunch of fan squid, if you ask me. Oh, and that's Mo. He sure has a sharp personality. As I've stated previously, squid are all about big events. The Squid Research Lab proudly presents a live performance by the Squid Sisters. The Squid Sisters are a new hit group comprised of Kelly and Marie. They're the hottest stars in the inkling world. And I'm back. Science never sleeps, and neither can I. Right now, you're looking at the second floor of Inkopolis Tower. It's the Battle Dojo. Here, Inklings can compete in local multiplayer skirmishes, play against friends casually, and practice to perfect one's skills for online battles. The goal? Elementary. To deflate the most balloons and egos. 
one point is awarded per pop balloon. But taking damage will subtract some points. Points earned during the last minute are doubled. That way, underdog stories are abundant, as are total stompings. In this mode, one player uses the gamepad, while another plays on the TV screen using a different input device, like the Wii U Pro controller. After earning their tentacles in Battle Dojo, a confident squid may want to swim onto the World Wide Web to battle against opponents from all over the place. Look no further than Inkopolis Tower to enter such an online battle. There are two types of online battles, regular battle and ranked battle. Regular battle refers to the turf wars, which I detailed in research record number five. In this mode, the winning team is decided based on the amount of area covered in their ink. After each match, players are shuffled between the two teams like the motion of particles, randomly, in other words. In this mode, Inklings can easily join friends who are already playing online. As always, teams are chosen at random, so they may end up as bitter rivals. In online battles, Wise Squid will notice that certain weapons offer key advantages in certain stages, so weapon choice is an important strategic decision. To best apply these strategies to the battle at hand, Inklings always choose from two stages. These stages change out every four hours, giving eager Inklings a reason to fight throughout the day. In fact, a newscast will announce which two stages are available for play when they change out, allowing Clever Squid to pick the right weapon set for their current situation. The other online mode is called Ranked Battle. There is more than one way to play this mode, including Splat Zones, where Squid Brothers and Sisters fight for control over a specific portion of the stage. Whichever team holds onto this area longest wins the match. Because both teams are drawn like magnets to this one area, these battles are incredibly fierce by nature. In ranked battle, players are rated based on skill and skill alone. Ranks go up and down based on wins and losses, with ranks ranging from C- to A+, across nine levels. That way, players of similar ranks can face off against each other. All right, here's where we separate the Inklings from the Squid Babies. You see, to participate in ranked battle, one must reach level 10 or greater, but that's not all. One other condition must be met to play ranked battle, a global condition. All across the world, the more players that reach level 10, the closer we'll get to reaching an exciting new event. At that point, ranked battle will be unlocked for the world to enjoy. The Squid Research Lab will provide status updates on this worldwide event on Nintendo's social media channels, including its official Tumblr account, splatoonus.tumblr.com, and on the official website, splatoon.nintendo.com. I'm sure that together, we fellow Squid fanatics will reach this goal in no time flat. And in the meantime, you can enjoy honing your skills, unlocking gear, ranking up, and fending off the Octarian threat. Now, for what is quite possibly the most startling revelation of all. Soon, Inklings the world over will have tons of exciting events to look forward to. It all starts after the launch of Splatoon. With various elements being powered up with free content, you won't know what to expect but you will know to stay tuned for what's happening and what's coming. Sometimes new stages will be added to the mix. The initial selection has plenty to wrap your tentacles around. But soon after launch, some far more technical stages will be added. New weapons will be introduced as well, including this one, the ink brush. This roller type weapon looks like a paintbrush, but the only art it specializes in is Turf War. Eventually, new gear will be added as well, including clothes and shoes. These events will also usher in new rule sets for ranked battle. The next to arrive is called Tower Control, and by science, is it interesting. Stand on the tower in the center of the stage, and it will start moving on a rail toward enemy territory. The team who pushes through the tower and to the goal first wins. Sadly, the poor inkling on the tower will be a constant target for the opponent team. Such is fate. The squid on the tower must be punished for his actions, and his allies must protect him. Natural selection at its finest. Ranked Battle will also receive a third rule set called Rainmaker. So far, my research is inconclusive, but they must have called it that for some reason. Making it rain, baby. Making it rain. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Moving along, August is when the competition really heats up with a major event. 
this new event will add in two additional matchmaking options. As more and more players master the strategies, weapons, and stages of turf war and ranked battle. The first allows four friends to team up and search online for another team to battle against. And the second option will gather eight friends together to wage custom online battles, enabling players to choose any stage and any rule set they want. This will be perfect for settling old scores or starting up new rivalries with seasoned squid buddies. Sounds tasty. As you can see, there are tons of exciting events coming post-launch. <clears throat> it's my understanding that the fun doesn't end here. At the corner of this plaza, we've discovered a classic arcade machine. Let's take a look. Eureka! This 8-bit style, oh, the nostalgia. This game within a game is called Squid Jump. It's a simplistic mini game where all you have to do is jump your way to the top, but it can be quite exciting to go for a high score. It's a fun diversion for any squid waiting to be matched for an online battle. Speaking of fun, here's another way to play. That's right, Amiibo. There's an Inkling Girl, an Inkling Boy, and an Inkling Squid Amiibo too. Each one offers 20 different missions. The Inkling Girl offers Charger Challenges, where you take on stages in Octo Valley with only a Charger. The Inkling Boy provides Roller Challenges. And the Squid Amiibo delivers a formidable mix. Both Kraken Challenges and Limited Ink Challenges. Sounds challenging. Upon clearing missions, you will acquire special gear. And if you complete all of the missions, you can unlock an additional minigame. These minigames can be swapped and played at any time, or while you're waiting to be matched. Oh, I almost forgot to divulge the most scientifically relevant portion of my reports. Splatfest! Remember the Squid Sisters? It seems they're not just pop stars. They're also the host of a news program that announces events that add in new maps and break battle-related news, including Splatfests. Splatfests are very special events that happen in Inkopolis, where players all across the Americas will be divided into two teams. Players ally themselves with one of these two teams and battle it out. When the ink settles, the winning side will be determined based on the results. Splatfests have their own ranking system, separate from Ranked Battle, based on the player's total points earned during Splatfest. Your final ranking at the end of the Splatfest may earn you that special item we mentioned earlier, the Super Sea Snail. For this, you can ask Spike to enhance your gear. The first Splatfest will take place from Saturday, June 20th at 6 a.m. through Sunday, June 21st at 6 a.m. Pacific Time. The theme is, which do you like better, cats or dogs? Squid is not an acceptable response, sadly. The real question is, are you Team Cat or Team Dog? If you belong to the winning side, you'll be rewarded with a Super Sea Snail. Remember, Splatfest happens on an irregular basis, so stay tuned. Well, it seems we're reaching the point where the human mind simply cannot handle any more squid-related info. However, I expect you all would like to know how you can conduct your own research. So I have one more major announcement. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Splatoon Global Test Fire is happening. Nintendo is holding a special event, a global celebration for science that will give players a taste of the action before Splatoon releases. After this announcement, we'll release a free demo version of this Splatoon Global Test Fire on Wii U. This software will allow you to test fire Splatoon globally at these specific dates and times. Speaking of, during this event, Nintendo will be hosting a live stream where staff from the Treehouse will play the game. But they're not the only ones playing. Researchers from our lab will join the battle wearing a lab coat costume. 
So if you see one of us in your match, it might be me. So take it easy. <laughs>